At the beginning of chapter three in our lecture series, we first introduced the power rule and said that if you take any power function, f of x equals x to the n, where n, again, is any real number, then the derivative of f of x will look like n times x to the n minus one. At the time, we only proved it for the case of monomial functions, that is, situations where this number n was a positive integer, and we claimed that it was true in general. We're, we're now in that setting where we actually can prove it in general, that is, we can prove the power rule for any real number, and it follows as a consequence of logarithmic differentiation. So suppose we have our power function y equals x to the n. Well, we're going to take the natural log of both sides, but the natural log of 0 is undefined, so we are going to assume that x is not 0 for this argument. We'll treat 0 separately in just a moment. So if we take the natural log of both sides, we'll get the natural log of the absolute value of y, which is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x to the n right there. Well, by properties of the natural log, excuse me, of the absolute value, this becomes the natural log of the absolute value of x raised to the nth power. And then by properties of the logarithm, you can bring that exponent out front as a coefficient, and we get n times the natural log of the absolute value of x. This is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of y. So then let's take the derivative of both sides. Let's take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. The left-hand side will become y prime over y, like we always get when we do logarithmic differentiation. Uh, the right-hand side, though, uh, because we have this n times the natural log of the absolute value of x right here, we can factor out the n. It's a constant multiple. So we have to take the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x. But that's just equal to 1 over x. So we get n times 1 over x. Putting that together, we get this n over x right here. Now, in order to get y prime, we have to solve for y. We're going to times both sides of the equation by y so that they cancel out on the left-hand side. So, so that means that the derivative of y will equal n y over x, but y is just the power function n to the x right there, excuse me, x to the n. And so then plug that in for y, we get n times x to the n over x. And therefore, if we subtract the powers, the power will lower by one. And so we end up with n times x to the n minus one. Uh, and that's then the derivative. Isn't that pretty neat? We were able to get the power rule formula using logarithmic differentiation. Like I said, we do have to treat uh, the case where x equals 0 separately, but we're going to go back to the definition of the derivative in that situation. So if we have to compute f prime at 0, we're going to take the limit of the difference quotient as h approaches infinity of 0 plus h to the n minus 0 to the n all over h. Well, if you take 0 plus h, that's just an h, so you're going to get h to the n. And if you take 0 to any power, that's just going to be 0. And so h to the n minus 0 will just give you h to the n like we see here. But then if we have h to the n divided by h, uh, by exponent rules, you can cancel out the h, and so you end up with an h to the n minus 1, which as h approaches 0, this will then just become 0 to the n minus 1 power, which is equal to 0. And anything times 0 is just 0, so if you want to, slap in some extra factor of n on there, uh, and that will then reproduce the formula as a special case when x equals 0. And so this shows us that the power rule is actually a special case of logarithmic differentiation. So we've been using the power rule for a good while here in chapter 3. Uh, unbeknownst to us, this is just a special case of a more advanced technique known as logarithmic differentiation.